All right, so this video uh, is an extension of our uh, discussion about increasing and decreasing intervals, as well as uh, positive and negative intervals. Um, and I've already done a longer kind of ex explanation video, uh, so make sure you go look for that. But I'm going to go through numbers two and three here. Uh, I'm going to do them very quickly because I've already done uh, the longer uh, explanation on another video. So here we go. Uh, write the intercepts as ordered pairs. Uh, the only intercepts I see are right here. That's an x-intercept at negative 2, 0. And I see a y-intercept here at 0, comma 2. Okay. All right, uh, identify the intervals of increasing and decreasing. Okay, well, I see the graph increasing here to here, as I wrote in purple. Okay, and that, that graph, we're going to assume it continues, going forever and ever. Okay, uh, but remember when I write the intervals, uh, I need to write it in uh, interval notation, which means I need to be referencing the domain or the x values of where it increases and decreases. So, increasing. The x value it starts increasing at is at negative 2, right here. Okay? So it starts increasing at negative 2, and I bet you if we let it go on forever, it goes to infinity. All right? Uh, I can include negative 2. There's no reason why I can't, so I'm going to put a bracket. That means inclusive. But I can never include infinity, so we put a parenthesis around it. All right, decreasing. Where does the graph decrease? Okay. Let's go ahead and... Highlight that real quick. So this is where it's decreasing. Okay. So it's going down left to right. Again, that's how we look at graphs. From left to right. So where does it start going down, though? Well, that's off the graph. That's at negative infinity, right? Because it starts going downwards all the way to that turning point, the vertex at negative 2. And that's where it starts to increase. But where it's decreasing, it starts at negative infinity and ends at negative 2. Again, I can never include negative infinity, but I can include negative 2. Why not? So there we go. Uh, there's increasing, decreasing. All right, the vertex as an ordered pair. Again, the vertex is that changing point where it goes from increasing, decreasing, which is right here at negative 2, 0. Great. All right, part D where it's positive and negative. Okay. So let's go ahead and I'm going to highlight it here again. In fact, I'll do it in yellow. Why not? So here's the x-axis. And the x-axis I highlighted because this tells me where the graph is above or positive, the x-axis, and then where the graph is below or where the graph is negative, below the x-axis. Okay? So it looks like it's positive at every single point except for one. Okay? Because technically when a point is at zero, it's not positive or negative. Okay? So make sure you keep that in mind. All right. So it's positive. I'll put P. It's, again, the graph is positive starting at negative infinity, sure, okay? But it stops being positive when it gets to the x-axis. And it looks like it does touch the x-axis at negative 2, right? Because negative 2 is, at, at negative 2, it's 0, and 0 is not positive or negative, okay? But it does pick it back up at negative 2 to positive infinity, Okay? Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, wait, why'd you write positive 2 twice? It seems redundant. Okay, but we do have to identify that it doesn't, it's not continuously positive. There is a point of which it reaches 0, and that's what we want to notify. Okay, so I can't include negative infinity, and again, I can't include negative 2. I already explained the other reason. Okay, and then it picks back up at negative 2 all the way to infinity, but I put a union there. Okay. And again, the reason why I broke it up is to signify that there is an intercept where, again, it crosses at zero, meaning it's not positive or negative. All right. And then negative, the, and is there any place where it's negative? So where it's below the x-axis? The answer is no, so there's none. There's no interval where uh, it's positive or negative. I mean, excuse me, there's no interval where it's negative. Even though it touches zero, zero is not negative. So uh, there you go. And then does the graph point, or again, with absolute values, is it open, up, or down? My clue here is I look at the arrows and where they're pointing, and they're pointing up, so it opens upwards. All right, here's number three. Let's go through this one. Intercepts. Uh, looks like the only one right here is at zero, zero. And that's also where my vertex is. We'll remember that for later. All right, where's the graph increasing or decreasing? Increasing. Looks like right here, correct? So the graph is going up, and we always read a graph left to right. 
All right, so it's increasing, starting at negative infinity, and stops increasing, and again, we always reference the x value, so at zero, okay? So, I can't include infinity, I can include zero. It stops increasing at zero, and then decreasing, let's pull another highlighter color here, Okay, it's decreasing here on this, okay, and so that means that it starts to decrease at zero, and then we'll go all the way to positive infinity. Well, let me just try that again, positive infinity, there we go. So, I can include zero, can never cap infinity, so there we go. So that's increasing, decreasing on those intervals. We just talked about the vertex earlier. Identify where the function is positive and negative. Again, let's go ahead and highlight the x-axis here because that will tell me where my graph is above the x-axis, or positive, and below the x-axis where it's negative, okay? And just like the last problem we just did, it's, it look, appears to be that there are no positive number. there's no positive interval. Again, it never actually gets to positive, and remember, zero is not positive or negative. But at negative, it starts at negative infinity, and zero, because when it hits zero, we have to stop. We can't include it. But it picks it back up again at zero to positive infinity, and we write two parentheses there. So that is how you do uh, increasing, decreasing with absolute value graphs. Uh, it actually makes it quite simple because there's only one point of which it's positive to negative, typically. Also increasing, decreasing, there's only one spot. It becomes a little bit more tricky when we do uh, polynomial graphs and all these other things, which we'll get to later on in the unit. But here's your introduction to increasing, decreasing, positive, negative with absolute value graphs.